All right, in this video, we're going to talk about crazy code HR departments. I'm going to go over three bullet points, help you to understand the uh, job requirements that you see out there and why they make no sense. So first thing you're going to see is crazy requirements. They'll say, we need you to learn Java. We need you to know Java, C Sharp, uh, Kubernetes, uh, AWS, uh, Azure. You also have to know PHP and Python. And you have to have a mastery of algorithm, algorithms and data science. And you're going to be building uh, web apps with WordPress. So they're going to be, you're going to see, I'm exaggerating, but you're going to see silly things like that because a lot of the HR departments, they don't exactly know what is needed. So they just throw everything out there. I've seen this since the 90s. They'll just list everything, all the popular texts, you know, they'll check out a website, top text, top technology, and they'll do that. So that's something that you see is very common. Don't worry about it. When you're first looking for jobs, what you ought to do is just do a search for the local job market and start applying, adjust your resume on a per business basis. I talked about this in other videos. Go in for the interviews, see what happens. If you fail, find out, hey, why, why didn't you hire me? Get some feedback and take it from there. It's okay. A part of the process of becoming a pro developer, especially that first job, is figuring out the job interview process. You're just going to get over that hump of the first job because once you're in there, you get that first job and you got like a year of experience, then that's it. You're set. You're set. Another silly thing that you see with the crazy code HR departments is the testing for algorithms and data structures. So I have said for years now that algorithm, algorithms and data structures are way overblown. Yes, some companies will test for it and some companies are legitimately testing for it. But I would say the vast majority who are testing for it, and I don't know what the percentage is. I'm not saying a lot of people test for this, but let's assume that a certain amount does or do. I, I would argue that most of them are testing for it when they test for data structures and algorithm is is stupid just because you're good at data structures and algorithms doesn't make you a good programmer necessarily it's kind of like saying if you're good at crossword puzzles that will make you a good writer no it will not same thing with data structures and algorithms data structures and algorithms are only important in very specialized niche type of programming if you're building a search engine, if you're creating a gaming engine, if you're processing huge amounts of data, search engine, right? Big data science projects. Other than that, if you're doing web dev, front end, back end, full stack, if you're doing mobile development, you're doing back end server scripting, data structures and algorithms have pretty much zero importance. Any decent fundamental course in software and programming whatever the language will teach you the basics of it. That's all you need to know. It's such a crazy requirement. So I've seen silly companies where they're doing web development or mobile development and they test people with algorithms and data structures. So the uh, nerds who do not know will say to you, well, if you know data structures and algorithms, that shows you're a good developer. No, it does not. It shows you know data structures and algorithms. You could be a master at that and still be a crappy web developer. It could be a crappy mobile developer. It could be a crappy developer. Just like if you could be a master at crossword puzzles and still be a horrendous, terrible writer. It's not, uh, it's not related. On the other hand, if you're working for Google and you're working on processing huge amounts of data, then data structures and algorithms, algorithms will make sense. Perhaps if you're building a new gaming engine where you want to optimize the physics or something, yeah, that, you know, algorithms could make sense. That said, these days you just implement libraries for that, right? It's been it's been done, you know. That innovation in terms of building physics engines and stuff, that's been that's been done 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. You don't need to reinvent that wheel. Another common thing that you see is that they'll ask you to have all these skills. Okay, you need to know C sharp, Java, we know I want you to know Python, no SQL, SQL, uh, Mongo, we want you to understand uh, DevOps. And uh, we need you to understand AWS and Azure and Google Cloud. And uh, you get the job and then they say, we need you to um, create a WordPress uh, template for us, a WordPress theme for us. And, okay, and integrate that with PayPal. I'm exaggerating, but it's very common. 
it's actually par for the course in software development where you'll be hired for A and you might find yourself six months later doing B, C, and D. Not uncommon. You never know what you're going to get. So here's the key. Here's the solution for you young nerdlings. So you learned your fundamentals. Number one, the first thing you got to do is have a good understanding of the fundamentals. I've been talking about this for the longest time. Fundamentals includes the basics, but a bunch of other stuff as well. So you got to learn your fundamentals. If you want to know about the fundamentals, links below, shameless self-promotion on my part. Anyhow, uh, you learn your fundamentals, then you want to start building real projects. What I have people do in my mentoring program is you go out and you do two to three small projects for local small business, nonprofit, whatnot. Building real projects for third parties is worth everything, everything. When you do a tutorial, that's like painting by numbers. You know, when you, as opposed to painting, real painting, it's like, you know when you get painting by numbers, they, they give you a picture and they, they, they cut it up into cubes and they say, this paint, use this color in number one and use this color in number, cube number two, et cetera. When you're doing tutorials, it's not, it's not really, you're not actually coding. You're just, uh, it's kind of like riding a bicycle with training wheels. You have to go out there and flex your coder intellectual muscles and you have to work with somebody, gather requirements, figure out what you need to do and implement. A tutorial is fine, do one or two, that's it, then move on, do the real thing. Once you've done the two to three small projects, you'll be in a magical position to apply for jobs. Why? A, you will have built a few projects for real. B, you have gained a lot of confidence since you've built these projects. And so your chances of getting a job will increase by 169.69%. 100% guaranteed about that. So this is the pathway to becoming a pro developer. Remember, when you're first applying for that first job, that's part of the process of learning, where you submit resumes, get feedback, get rejected, try again, another resume, get rejected. You gotta tailor your resume in in accordance to the job you're uh, applying for. So for example, if you're applying for a a JavaScript node job, you know, don't put your your Python uh, Udemy projects at the top. You don't put any Udemy projects. You don't wanna put tutorials in there. Hey, I did this tutorial, or I did this video game tutorial. Look, here's the game of Flappy Birds. That's not gonna. It's not gonna give anybody any confidence. In fact, it's gonna give the opposite. You got to get in there and do those little freebie freelance projects I talked about just earlier. That's gonna make all the difference. Then you tailor your resume according to the job you're applying for. So if you're doing, if you're applying for Node jobs. You better have node skills and make sure that's put at the top of the resume, your node experience. Don't apply for jobs. I know I shouldn't have to say this, but I've seen it. Don't apply for jobs in an area where you don't have any skills. So, you know, if the job requires that uh, you have extensive C-sharp .NET uh, experience and you've never done it before, don't apply for that job. You're wasting your time and you're wasting everybody else's time, you know? If you see a job at a company with .NET, where they have a lot of .NET openings, then go learn .NET and try to find little two or three freelance .NET projects, although although that might be a little bit more difficult, but find them or, or maybe stage work. Then you apply for the job. See how it works? See how it works? So yes, it's, um, it's not necessarily super obvious how to go from knowing nothing to getting that job. But the pathway is is still there once you have a bit of guidance. It's still there, it's pretty clear to me, and I hope it's a little bit clearer for you. So don't get put off by these weird, crazy code HR department job requirements. There's a lot of strange stuff going going on out there, it's just the way it goes.